One of the most common things I see are people making videos about how they sent books off to CGC or wherever, and they came back and they did not get the grades they expected. Well, as they're holding the books up, showing them to the camera, they're like, man, this should have been a 9.6 or 9.8, and I can clearly see flaws on it that would cap it at maybe an 8.0 or something, and the book got the 8.0. So I'm not talking down about these people, I mean, because we just don't know, right? Grading is hard. It's very subjective. And if you don't have a system in place to do it, it, you can miss stuff. So I've been doing this just back into the hobby for almost a couple of years now. And I learn something every day about the grading process. And that's what it's all about. And that's what I think is key. If you want to accurately grade your books consistently, you need to have a process in place. You need to take your time and do it kind of the same way every time. And I'm going to show you in this video, I've got three examples of the same book. And we're going to show you what to look for and some pitfalls that you might encounter. But most of all, we're going to focus on that process that I recommend. Now, whatever process you use is fine, but I recommend doing kind of what I do. Because what I do is make sure every part of the book is covered. Because it's very easy to pick a book up, look at it, and just miss something obvious because you're not focused on a certain area of the book. So I've divided the book into basically seven key areas, and you focus on each one of those areas. It, it doesn't have to take that long. In fact, one area of the book can take you literally 10 seconds. And you go through and evaluate each area, and you kind of get a consensus grade based on looking all, at all of those areas. And actually, I, I created a tool to actually use this system, and I'll tell you about that as well as we go through here. And, and let's just get started. Okay, so you got your book out of the bag. I recommend leaving it on a backing board while you're evaluating it. That way there's no spine stress or anything being added to the book that we don't need to. Also recommend wearing gloves. Of course, if you just wash your hands really well and dry them, you're okay to handle books without gloves. But I just, I just typically do it nowadays just because I handle a lot of books and I don't want to take any chance of adding a fingerprint or anything like that to the books, right? Okay, so I, like I said, there's seven key areas that I look at and I'll just cover them just briefly. There's bindery, which could be like something torn up here, like bindery tears. It could be something common to the book, where there's like a little tear on a certain spot. You know, anything that's done in production that is not done after it's sold to a consumer, right? So that's what I would refer to as bindery. Sometimes it counts a lot against the book. Sometimes it doesn't count much at all. So we just have to evaluate it. The next one I always evaluate is the corners of the book. Then I do the edges of the book, both front and back, of course. Now that's the edges, not the spine. So it's three sides here on both sides of the book, front and back. Then we look at the spine itself here and we evaluate it. And the staples, we take a close look at the staples. Are they rusted? Are, they, are there tears on them? That kind of thing. Then we'll look at the actual cover itself, see if there's anything on it. You know, it could be pitting, it could be a tear, it could be you know, like a dent, it could be a writing on the book, anything on the actual cover that isn't the edges, corners, or spine. And then the last thing we'll do is we'll go through the entire book, we'll flip, make sure there's nothing missing, make sure there's not any tears on the interior, staining, that type of thing. You got to look at the inside of the book too. It's not all about the outside or the cover. Although most of the defects do accumulate on the cover of the book because of, for obvious reasons, the inside is kind of protected by the cover. So that's the seven key areas. Now, when I'm evaluating these books, I'm kind of getting an idea in my head of what is the extent of the damage. As part of my process, as I'm going through each other area, I'm generally going to assign six different categories of damage. Now, usually on a high grade book, you're going to just stick with the first couple or three categories. On a lower grade book or a mid grade book, you might be straying into the heavier damages or defects that can be on a book. So what I always like to refer to, and this is terminology used by the grading companies. Negligible would be the lowest amount of defect. It's a negligible defect is something you can only see with like magnification or getting it at a certain angle. Tiny would be you can see it, but it doesn't really detract from the book, and it's kind of hard to find unless you're actually looking for it. It could be easily missed. Minor would be okay. It's there. There's a little tiny color break, something there, but it's so insignificant. It doesn't really detract from the overall quality or the presentation of the book. Once you get to number four, though, moderate damage. Now, this is something that's there. I mean, it's a rounded corner. It's a small little tear. It's a giant spine tick with color break. 
it's going to detract from the book. Okay, the presentation is now hurt. That's when we're getting into moderate territory. Then we move on to extensive, which is maybe a major rip or a stain. Or some, Stains are always usually moderate or extensive at the minimum. They really take away from the grade of a book. Um, it could be a spine split would be extensive. And, you know, it could be a big giant crease that goes all the way across here uh, or all the way across the middle of the book. It's been folded in the center at some point. It's extensive damage. It's a little bit more than moderate, but not quite to the major category. Now, major would be like this whole section of the book missing. That would be a major cover damage. It could be like um, a page missing. That would be on the interior. That's major damage. And then uh, detached staples. One detached staple could be extensive. Two detached staples could be major. And, you know, once you go through that and you evaluated all seven areas of the book, and in fact, I have a downloadable printable sheet you can use to evaluate books. And I also have a tool for evaluating books. It's, I'll put the link in the description and the link above as well. And I did a whole video on it. Just search my channel for, and I'll put a link in the description on grading tool and you will pull it up. But for the process, just go through each area of the book, one by one, assign an extent of damage, and at the end, you kind of get a consensus grade based on everything you found. And, but one thing you want to be careful of, now I, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, is a lot of people will just look at a book like this, and they'll flip it over and they'll just get kind of a survey of it. They'll miss something here or there, or they won't get it in the light and do angles like this. Because sometimes you'll see something that you completely won't see if you don't have good lighting and you're not seeing it at an angle. A lot of times I'll do this and I'll be like, whoa, there's a giant bend right here that you can't see this way, but if you turn it this way, you can see it. You know, so you got to look at it from all angles because graders, professional graders, are certainly going to be do, doing that. So let's just go ahead and just quickly grade this book. I'm not going to spend a lot of time because I've done plenty of videos on this, but what you're looking for is first we're going to do the bindery and that's not really anything on this book we need to worry about. I don't see any kind of bindery dings or anything production wise. So usually you can either put nothing there or it's just negligible if there is anything. It's You hardly ever stray or get more than minor on that type of thing. And then we'll look at the corners and you're looking for sharpness. Does it look like it was just cut yesterday? Or is there like a little ding on them? Now these corners are perfectly sharp. They don't look like any damage has been done. And that's both on the front and the back. That one's bent in a little bit. Um, so we probably just go, you know, tiny on the corners on this. Just because of that. Now, if that was, if you press that, that probably fixes that and it goes away. And then we would look at the edges of the book. Are, are there any kind of dings, tears? And I'm just looking at this book. There's nothing. So I would say negligible if there's like a tiny little thing or just leave it blank if there's nothing. And then I would go to spine and I would see if there's any ticks. And then a color break, so there's a color break there and there and there. And I would just generally count them. I mean, if you count five or six or seven, you're probably, you know, in the minor range. If you count just a couple, you're probably a tiny. If you just see um, so a couple ticks here or there, but they don't have color breaks, I would call it negligible. You're very rarely going to see a perfect spine, but if you do, just leave it blank. And then I would look at the staples. Is there any kind of rusting, uh, scratching, like, like scuffed? That would count. These are perfectly shiny. There's no kind of stresses on them or anything like that. There might be like a tiny thing there, but that could be bindery. And so I don't see anything like that. So, you know, we would stick to nothing or negligible. And then look at the cover. And I do see several little places where it's been thumb bends on this one, which this is all pressable defects without color breaks. So I would probably go minor on that just because I'm seeing a few thumb bends. And then you just keep going through that, and eventually you get down to the last thing, which is flipping through the book. And if you don't see anything on the inside, you also want to look at page quality. Are they off-white, cream? If it's off-white, I generally would go something like tiny or negligible, and everything else is perfect. You know, if it's heavily yellowed, I would it does count against the book. I would probably go somewhere in the minor to moderate range. If it's cream-colored, you know, or brittly, I would go extensive or major. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. Those are the seven key areas and those are the six categories of defects that I would use on a book. And like I said, 
Look at the link in the description. Go to my grading tool, make a copy of it, and all of this is on there for you. And you can print out the sheet. You can go through these books one by one, any book you have, and it'll give you a decent ballpark grade. Now, this is a work in progress. It's a beta. So if you give me any feedback, I can improve this tool. The last thing you would do as part of your process is once you get done, you would look at a book and say, okay, um, there's a cap. Like there's a chart that I created that if there's a certain amount of damage, like a one inch tear, you got a cap of 7.0 on a book. You could have a perfect 9.8. And if you have a one inch tear right here on the bottom on the back, you cannot get higher than a 7.0 by most grading standards. And so you, the last thing you have to do is just say, okay, I think this is an 8.5, but I got the one inch tear. So now it's a 7.0 cap. And generally what you want to do is you do not come up with a specific grade. Like I'm not going to say this is a 9.4. I'm going to say, okay, 9.4 is what I think it is, but it's probably going to be somewhere between 9.2 and 9.6. It's a range. And usually, if you can get pretty good at grading, you can get within your range a good 90% of the time, I find. And if you're outside that range, there's probably a really good reason and something you missed on a book. So on this specific one right here, I'm, I'm guessing this is currently about a 9.4, and maybe even 9.2 to 9.4. And I think after a clean and press, I probably could get this book to a 9.6. But like I said, that could be anywhere from a 9.4 to a 9.8. I don't think this would ever get a 9.8 with these color breaks, but I've been surprised before. But I think after a clean and press, this is a 9.4, 9.6 book. Um, outside chance of 9.2, outside chance of 9.8 in that range. But obviously it's a high grade book. And if it didn't come back at least 9.2, I know I missed something somewhere or the greater made an error or something like that. Um, so yeah, that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know about the process. Now what I will do is I'm going to pull out another copy of this. It's in a lower grade and we're going to see why it's a lower grade. Okay, here we go. Now besides being a new stand versus the direct we just had, if you were to look at this book you would almost think it was the same grade. And in fact this book looks really good if you just hold up I'm like man that looks like a high grade book. This could be a 9.4, 9.6. But, however, if you get it down in the light at angles, you can start to see it's rife with ticks. And, but the big thing on this one, it has a bend right here that I can't see here, but if I put it here in the light, I don't know if you can see that. There's a big bend right here through the book. And it extends into the pages. Now, that could be pressed, but it's not pressed yet. And there's a bend all the way through every page of this book, at least through the first half of it, I would guess. Turn it over. There's a slight little spine roll here. I mean, it's just the beginnings, and that would press out. And you see a corner's been bent over. This one's kind of dinged right there. Looks great from here, but if you get it down at the angle, the one big thing you'll notice is a big line right across here. It looks like somebody took an ink pen almost, or maybe had a piece of paper over top, and whoop, put a big line through here. And it's broken through the color. This is something that's virtually going to be impossible to get off by a cleaner and a presser. It could be cleaned up maybe. But I don't think you're ever 100% getting that. I've been surprised before, but I'm assuming that's going to leave a big mark across there. And that's huge. If you look at a grading cap, they're going to crown that almost as a crease across the entire half of the book. That very well could land you in 6.0 to 6.5 to maybe 7.0 cap on this book. So while it looks the same as the other 9.4 to 9.6... If I turn it over and evaluate completely, which you could easily miss that if you weren't looking for it, this is now a 7.0 maybe, 6.0 to 7.0 book. And that's what you have to evaluate it as. Maybe even a 5.5 right now before clean and press and maybe a cap of 7.0-ish, you know, afterwards. So you got to be careful. You got to get it at all angles and you got to look at the entire book. You got to open it up and the entire centerfold could be missing. There could be a cutout. You know, this ad right here could have been cut out. That detracts. That puts you in the extensive to major damage when you cut a piece out of a book. I mean, you go from a 9.8 to maybe an 8.0 or something, probably, if you have a cutout. I'm not sure what the cap is without looking it up. That's very possible. Now let's look at one last one here. Now the reason I picked this one is it because it, it is also in the 6.0 range. But if you can see, look, giant ticks. This book has been folded almost over this way multiple times causing that. You got a lot of crinkling right here. This book does not present nearly as well as the last one, but it doesn't have the big crease down the middle, and the back looks fairly good. There's a few ticks here. There's some crinkling here. A lot of that would press out, but the reason I'm highlighting this is because right now, 
This book is probably in the same range, 5.56, but doesn't look nearly as nice as that one. After press, this one could potentially get 8.0. So while this last book is infinitely better presenting, it can't get as high of a grade as this one that doesn't present nearly as well. That's the game we play, right? So would you rather have the 7.0 that looks better, or would you rather have the 8.0 that doesn't look as nice but has that 8.0 grade? I would take the 7.0. A lot of people might take the 8.0. It's That's the hobby, and maybe this 7.0 is worth more than this 8.0 to some people. Like I said, that's, <laughs> that's part of collecting comics, and everybody has a preference, and that's why we have a grading system. But the grading system does not always tell the whole story. Long story short, buy the book. Don't buy the grade, right? So once again, check the description uh, for the video and the tool on how to grade comics in the process. It's a work in progress. Go to my website, improvecollecting.com, and please join my newsletter. And you'll get updates on the status of the grading tool and any updates over the time. Any other tools or tips that I have as well, I'll send you. I'm not going to spam you. It's not that kind of newsletter. I don't send an email every day, every week even. Only when I have something to say that I think will help collectors out there. So I hope this video has been helpful. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.